Grace and peace to you all, and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little, and I am a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. We begin our service with our call to worship. We are called to be God's children. God's love has been poured on us through Jesus Christ. Fear and doubt are gone. Joy and celebration ring in our hearts. Come, let us raise our voices in exhilaration. Let us offer our hearts and souls to God in prayer and praise. We begin with our opening prayer. We pray. O God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord of light and mercy, be with us this day as we again hear the stories of faith and sight. Help us to believe in your abiding presence with us, both in our darkness and in the light which you bring. Give us courage and strength to witness to your resurrection. For we offer this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we'll be talking about the resurrection. And the resurrection story is the account of Jesus Christ arising from the dead after being crucified on the cross and buried in the tomb. It is the cornerstone of Christian doctrine and the foundation of Christian hope. By rising from the dead, Jesus Christ fulfilled his own promise to do so, and he solidified the pledge he made to his followers that they too would be raised from the dead to experience eternal life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Without resurrection, Jesus could have been thought of as simply a great teacher and a good man. But after he rose from the dead, his followers knew for certain that he was who he had claimed to be, the resurrection and the life, the savior of the world. The resurrection made it possible for Christians to receive the power of Christ's life living inside of them. Likewise, the resurrection sealed the Lord's promise that all those who believe in him will experience resurrection life and share in eternity. So what does the resurrection mean to us here in this present day? We start by going to scripture. 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Within these scripture verses, we are called to consider how the resurrection reverberates in the present, but also in the future. We should sense that the impact of the resurrection is far-reaching. Indeed, it changes everything. Death has been defeated, and the Holy Spirit is being poured out. The result is not only justification for those who otherwise are rightly condemned, but also life in the Spirit, 
a new ethic, a new way of being human. What we find conveyed from the pen of the Apostle John are amazing things consequent upon the resurrection. The first amazing thing is this. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. John's words are simple, but they show the depths of God's grace. Whenever our relationship to God is expressed in Scripture in terms of father and children, we should be amazed. We stand as justified, and not only justified, but adopted. We are the children of our Heavenly Father. God calls those who are dust and ashes and unworthy because of sin and renders them his children because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, the Son. The second amazing implication is, the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. In other words, the world, then as now, does not understand Christians because it does not understand the nature and the love of the true and living God. Indeed, the world rejects its maker in favor of itself and its own arrogant self-understanding. As a result, it does not understand the children of the Heavenly Father either. This is perhaps a sad and difficult contrast to the wonder of being the children of God through faith by grace. With the promise of future glory comes life presently under the shadow of the cross. And John, as a true theologian of the cross, does not hide from the truth of what it means to be God's child in this world. John had been at Jesus' side on the first Holy Thursday evening. He had the Lord's words preserved in his heart and mind so that he could deliver them years later in his gospel for God's children to consider as an abiding reality. In John chapter 15, we hear, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me." The reality of the cross in the Christian's life must be taken seriously. But even under the cross, God's lavish love can still be seen. Saint Paul was no stranger to the world's malice for those who are the Lord's people, yet he reminded the Romans in Romans chapter 5, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, th <clears throat> through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. The third amazement in the text of 1 John is, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. Here, our eyes are drawn out from behind the shadow of the cross and this perishing world to the light of the promise of eternal life, to the joys of heaven. But John must tell us our assurance of heavenly blessedness, rooted and certain as it is in the relationship to our Father, is nonetheless a mystery to us here in its fullness. He says, what we will be has not yet been made known. Jesus gives us reason to have excited anticipation regarding our future. I have gone to prepare a place for you. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Interestingly, of course, heaven is often described for us in the scriptures in terms of what it is not 
or what will not be there. What comfort, for instance, for weary soldiers of the church militant to hear. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Revelations chapter 11. We have a longing to be there, a longing to see finally and fully the bliss of eternal life. Even though it is hidden from us now, we have his promise, it is sure. Finally, there is the wonder which is closely tied to the contemplation of the joy of our heavenly home. John declares, we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What John especially reminds us, however, is of Jesus in this regard. When Jesus returns to gather his people, his brothers and his sisters, we shall be like him. Our Lord Jesus took our flesh upon himself in his incarnation. He is God and man in one person, and we shall see him in his glory. We shall see him in heavenly flesh in his resurrection body. Even though it is hidden from us now, we have his promise, it is sure. And now let us, God's people, pray. Jesus, our Christ and our peace, as you stood among the disciples then, you stand among us still and call us to the actions of hope and love that will purify our souls. Release us from the doubts and temptations that lure us from your presence, that by our repentance we may dwell in the spiritual safety offered by your love and forgiveness. O Lord of wonders, strengthen our faith and trust. Jesus, our Christ and our peace, infuse our elected, appointed, or self-declared leaders with wisdom, compassion, and the ways of justice and mercy as they chart the course. Fill us with courage and grace to hold you in our hearts as we hold them accountable. O Lord of wonders, strengthen our faith and trust. Jesus, our Christ and our peace, calm the fears and pain for all who suffer through physical or emotional illness, addiction or despair, and grant respite to those who provide support. Jesus, our Christ and our peace, ease our grieving hearts and minds with the knowledge and comfort that those who have joined you in the glory of resurrection now dwell in the eternal gladness and freedom of salvation. O Lord of wonders, strengthen our faith and trust. Jesus, our Christ and our peace, as the disciples in their time, help us give witness to the truth of your words and the fullness of life in following you. Energize us to engage with their few fervor that we may stride confidently and reverently into each day together proclaiming you by thought, word, and action. O Lord of wonders, strengthen our faith and trust. God of the beginning, the now, and of all that is to come, raise us as you raised our Christ into the faithfulness of heart, mind, and soul that leads us to the glory and the better times with you. We ask through the name of Jesus, our risen Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our sanctifier, who together with you reign as one God forever and ever. Amen. And now, go in courage and peace, proclaiming the risen Lord to all. Be those who bring hope and justice to a hungry and hurting world. The peace of the Lord is with you now and forever. Amen.